Hey guys, so I'm out at the airport today inspecting a buddy of mine's aircraft, uh, doing his annual inspection. And I don't do a ton of these, but it is a Cessna 140, and I just did my Cessna 140's inspection. So this is a pristine 140. It's absolutely stunning. So I was excited to look at it anyways to get some ideas for mine as well as just to help out a buddy whose aircraft needs to be annual. What I'm going to do today though is talk about probably one of the most important tools in my opinion that an aircraft mechanic needs to have in their box. It is versatile. A lot of people when they hear this tool they think of the engine or looking at cylinders or valves or stuff but to be honest I use this on an airframe as much as I do the engine. So the tool that I want to talk about today is a bore scope and I'm sure many of you have one, many of you use it, but I'm also sure that if you were like me you went years as an AMP without ever actually having one. If you work for a company, they probably have one for you to use. But if you're by yourself doing you know, maintenance on your own aircraft or maintenance for a few other people or even GA maintenance, you may not even own one of these things. And like I said, it is probably one of the most important tools that you can purchase. If you stick around to the end of the video, I'm going to give a little bit of a life update as well. So I hope you enjoy this. Um, look at a couple different models of borescopes here and have a great rest of your day. Thanks for watching. Today what I would like to do is talk about bore scoping and what I unfortunately have found, I think it's getting more popular uh, with AMPs today, but it's such a simple thing that can improve the quality of your inspections, uh, especially power plant inspections, but honestly uh, on an airframe as well. Unfortunately right now the main way that we determine the health of a engine is through compression tests. It is a requirement, it's something that's on the list of things to do for annuals and 100 hours according to Appendix D of FAR Part 43, but it is a flawed test. There are plenty of studies out there, and I'm not going to go into this in this video, of cylinders with maybe 20 or 30 or 40 pounds of pressure doing a traditional compression test that the engine still made full rated power. So while we are supposed to do it and they are supposed to meet a certain criteria, something that I found is a better judge of the health of these engines, especially once you have a data log of these, is borescopes. And so that's what I wanna kinda of talk about today. So this is the borescope, it's a deep stack or depth stack um, borescope. Uh, it works, it's not the best one. I think it was like 50 bucks on Amazon. And uh, I like this one because of its simplicity uh, as well as its affordability. It's pretty simple, the carrying case is extra. But if I get it out right here, you can see it comes with some nice uh, Velcro coils. You've got more than enough cable uh, to bore scope. And it has a pretty good image here if I get it to come online. And this is really nice about showing you detail inside, uh, especially like the piston. And it comes with a little kit of attachments that allows you to see the valves as well. And that's what's so good about this is maybe the first annual or two, it's not gonna be as valuable, but by the time you get a backlog of six or seven annuals or six or seven times that you've had a spark plug off and you just stick the bore scope in there to take a look at it, you can really quickly get a trend timeline sort of established for both your pistons and your valves. So you can see if something's abnormal or you can see if something is going wrong. Now the problem with that is you may be able to see it and not know what you're seeing. So I'm really considering sort of collecting and compiling a database of borescope images and creating, not a class, but creating a video dedicated to teaching how to read a borescope. If you have good borescope images, feel free to shoot me an email in the email that I've got here on YouTube, flyingmechanicyt at gmail.com. Get me copies of those so that way I can include them and, and give some credit to you as well for that in that video that I hope to produce maybe in the next 12 months. Uh, but anyways, here's how handy this is I want to show you guys on this continental engine that I'm looking at today all right so I'm gonna to try to record this to where you guys can see it on your end hopefully this works um, but basically the way that uh, I like to do this first make sure that your piston is all the way at the bottom of the stroke uh, that's gonna give you your best angle to look and what's nice about this is you can actually control the brightness if you can't see the detail that you need with this, it's very easy to adjust this brightness. It's only got three settings, low, medium, and high. Some more fancy or more practical, I guess you might say, borescopes have higher settings. But again, I wanted to use the bare minimum here to show you guys the benefit of this. It looks like this piston's got a little build up on it, but overall this looks, this looks okay. So the way that I do this is I take a picture of each piston and each valve set. 
I compile all of those on one sheet of paper front and back and that becomes an additional item I give an owner to track the history of that engine. It sort of supplements my compression test um, as well as giving me a good reference data point to consider what to look for down the road. Okay, some brutal pros and cons about this. Uh, pro, it's cheap. You know, it's 50 bucks on Amazon uh, and I think that's its normal price. I don't think I got that for a special. Um, I think for like 70 or 80 bucks, I got this in the case, which I recommend getting a case. I mean, these ends, these tips here are so stinking tiny. It's, you're gonna lose them if you don't have a case. It is not articulating. So basically the end of it is, it doesn't bend any. There are some out there that can give you a 180 degree bend on your viewport, which is really nice. And I've used, I think Nvidia has one like that. If it's a non-articulating end, you're not gonna get a good shot of either valve, much less both. Uh, so the main way that I do this this is, I just go in, I try to locate uh, my exhaust valve here uh, on the left side of this cylinder. Um, and again, like you can sit here and try to let it come into focus, but really all you're looking at is for any major deposits. You can't see a burn ring here. All of this is out of contrast, so it's almost impossible to get a good view. And the other drawback I found with uh, this Deep Stack brand is that it has a set focal length and there's some ranges. Um, once you get outside of about four or five inches, it's not going to focus. One of the things that I don't like about this one as well is you can't review the photos in the device. You have to actually load it into a computer and look at it. They are timestamped, so you can do them in order and I always do not firing order, I actually do cylinder order for simplicity stake for owners. But yes, you can't review these on the device. You have to go into remove the SD card, put it in a computer. So cheap, but you also get what you pay for. So you may be thinking, okay, what's the purpose of even having that cheap bore scope? So let's say that you know you're uh, flying for the first time in a few months. You're like me, and you got a grass strip for 50 bucks. You can take and you can just pop out an inspection port. And you can very easily verify there's no rat's nest, no bird's nest. Like it, it makes an incredible inspection tool inside of your inspection ports after prolonged inactivity. I do this on a regular basis outside of my annuals to just verify that uh, there's no more rat's nest in my 140. Um, if you guys remember, I ended up running into that situation to where because it is set for a decade, um, it had become Ratsylvania Hotel. It's nice, not just because of engine inspections from an AMP's perspective, but it's really nice when it comes to an owner trying to do a more thorough than normal pre-flight inspection. All right, so we're back in here today and I'm almost done with uh, the annual on this 140. I have a second borescope that I want to show you guys, and this one's a little bit higher quality than the previous one, and it has one function that if you're an AMP, you need this. It doesn't matter if it's this particular borescope or not, but you need what I'm about to show you guys to just make your life way better and have way better quality inspections. All right, so this is the Teslong or Teslong, not sure how you say it. Uh, Borescope, it comes with its own case. I didn't have to buy this like I did the other one. Um, when you open it, uh, and I've already opened this and, and gotten it out and played with it a little bit. It's well packaged. It's got a zipper pocket that holds all your documentation and stuff. And the actual Borescope itself has this function, which is incredibly important. It's a really heavy duty cable here. Um, it is a bit larger of a cable than maybe the previous Borescope. Um, but this function right here is what's so important. So I'm going to show you guys. Here's my hand. Watch this. So you can physically, and this is not like a motor or anything. It's just a physical connection. That articulation right, right here that's going on, that is key. What this is going to allow me to do is to actually take this borescope and inspect the valves um, as well as the burn pattern around the valve. That'll let you know if you've got a stuck valve, um, this one that's not turning correctly. Um, there's a lot of information that hopefully in a future video I will pass along on how you can use this. And uh, I just wanna kinda show you guys the video quality of this as well, just like I did for the other one. 
So when you power this thing on, um, it'll go through its little boot up scene. So you can see it's a pretty decent quality shot here. Um, it's clear on my screen. I know it's not on yours. Like I can see individual stars in the flag on the back wall. All right, so here you can really get a good view of the benefit of the articulation. I'm actually moving the head up and down with my hands. I'm not even moving my arm. And we're getting a good chance to look at this. But more importantly, if I push in just a little bit more, I can flip all the way around and I can look at my valves. Like I said before, it is invaluable to have a borescope for both the engine as well as airframe items. While we often think of the borescope as an engine tool, it can be useful in areas where an inspection mirror would be very difficult to effectively see with. So to be honest, this is what I prefer. Um, this borescope that uh, we just looked at, the test long. The nice thing about this, that the previous model, the depth stack that I showed you guys, the nice thing about these compared to it is these you can, using Wi-Fi, directly download onto a laptop or a phone and get those images into a device that you can use them. The tip stack, you have to actually remove the SD card, go through the process of uploading it to a computer. If you're interested in these, I'll have them linked down below in the description of this video, uh, an Amazon affiliate link that you can go and look at. But again, this is what I think is probably one of the most valuable assets, most valuable tools in an aircraft mechanics box. The extra quality of an inspection that you can do with this, um, whether you're talking airframe or power plant, is huge. So hopefully that was interesting, and like I said, down the road, if I get enough of these videos and photos, I'll be able to explain to you guys kind of what looks good, um, stuff that's concerning and, and really just do an in-depth discussion about using a borescope. So it's been a while since I posted any videos and there's a lot going on right now that I could explain but basically we're building and I'm doing about 75% of the work. Uh, I've still been flying the 140, um, working on it. I've got footage for a video that I'm hopefully going to release in the next few weeks. But one of the things I wanted to update, uh, just kind of a, like a life update here, is I recently had several people mention that I should set up a Patreon account. If you're not familiar with what Patreon is, the best way I've heard it described is a goodwill engine. It's a way for you as a viewer or someone who enjoys what I'm doing to help support it without having any massive fees or anything like that applied to your support. It is one of the reasons that I'm able to do this video today. I set it up a while ago and was surprised at how fast people jumped on board, but I haven't really mentioned it in a video, so I wanted to jump onto this video and say, if you're interested in supporting what I do on this channel, go over to patreon.com slash the flying mechanic or there'll be a link down in the description below, as well as on my main channel page. The three levels that I've got set up, I didn't want to do anything drastic, so they're, they're very basic levels and they're not even based on video. They're a monthly donation that you can do to help support the things that I do on this channel. So I really appreciate the investment that you are making into me to help me continue to make the quality of video that I hope to be able to do on this channel. Thanks for sticking around, and I know many of you have commented or messaged that you're wanting to see more Cessna 140 videos, and I don't think you're gonna be disappointed on the next one. Have a great rest of your day.